Control chaining is a great way to ensure that when you filter an HTML page using a control, all of the available values for other controls on the page will display valid data. Chaining is easy when one control depends directly on another, but things can get complicated when the relationship between control values is less direct. For example, you may want to use selections from one control to set the start and end dates that you can select in a set of calendar controls. Because this uses one control to supply two different values to other controls, some additional configuration is needed. In our example, we've created this calendar heat map. This chart type is an extension that you can download from the Information Builder's GitHub site. This chart shows the quantity sold for each day. In order to break up the data, we want to be able to set start and end dates to be shown on the chart and want to view data only within a certain sales quarter. Therefore, we need to set limits for the start and end date based on the quarter that we select at runtime. To do this, let's add two simple parameter filters to the chart, both of which will affect the sale date field. The first will filter the chart for values after the start date parameter, and the other will filter the chart for values before the end date parameter. These values should have an AND relationship, indicating that the dates shown in the chart must satisfy both conditions. The values for these parameters will be defined by a parameterized report that we will create next. This report will define the initial filter values and set the start and end dates available in the calendar controls on the HTML page. Therefore, to show sales for each quarter, we will sort the report by sale year quarter. Next, we'll add two sale date columns. These will serve as our start and end dates. Make both columns into aggregate fields and add the min prefix operator to the first one and the max prefix operator for the second one. Then rename the fields to start date and end date. Next, we'll create a parameter to specify a single start and end date to be used by the calendar controls. This is a dynamic parameter filter for the same field you use to sort the report. The same field will later be used in a control on the HTML page so that users can select a value to specify the date limits. Next, add the same start date and end date filters that you added to the chart, where sale date is greater than or equal to the start date parameter and less than or equal to the end date parameter, to the report. This time, however, make these parameters optional. This report will set the date range for our calendar control, so we need it to be able to run before we've made the calendar control selections to set values for these parameters. Finally, change the report's output format to XML and change the destination from a temporary hold file to a web browser. This way, the values output by the report procedure can be picked up by the calendar controls. Once we've saved the report, we can create the HTML page. The first step in the HTML page is to configure a control that will define the date limits in the calendar controls that will be added afterward. We will use a drop-down menu. In the Requests and Data Sources panel, reference the external report that you just created, but don't add it to the page. In the Settings panel, with the control selected, change the data type to Dynamic, leave Default selected, and select the master file and field that you use to sort the report. Set the selection2 value to target the dynamic parameter in the report that matches the sort field. Now let's add the content that we want to show on the page. This is the chart that we showed previously, which we will reference from a chart component. Make sure the content uses calendar controls for the start date and end date parameters. We will use the automatically created control panel from the new parameters dialog box. Now we will format each control. Select the first control, which will be used to set the start date. Open the settings panel. The selection two area should point to the start date parameter in the chart request. In the pop-up calendar settings section, set the date range to dynamic and select the report request from the select custom request menu. Do the same for the end date calendar but this time it should set values for the end date parameter. All other settings are the same. Additionally, so that the default value in the dropdown menu doesn't set the range of the calendars when the page initially loads, 
Use the loading procedure property to delay the loading of calendar values until we select a value from the drop-down menu. Select each calendar control and set the loading procedure property to On Demand. Next, open the Tasks and Animations panel to set the first calendar to load when a selection is made from the drop-down menu. Create a new task and change the trigger type to Selection Changed, and select the drop-down list as the trigger identifier. Next, add a new refresh action. Change the target type to Input Control and select the first calendar. Now, create a similar task that will load available values into the second calendar control. Create a new task that executes when the selection is changed in the first calendar, and set it to refresh the values in the second calendar. Now we're done. Let's run the page to see how it looks. When we select a year and quarter, the calendar controls update to start and end dates for that quarter. Notice that we can't select values from outside of that range. When we run the request, the chart updates to show data for the specified range. When we click the refresh button, the calendar controls revert to use the start and end points specified in the request. As you can see, you can use parameters to guide your users in interacting with your content to make sure it appears the way you want it to. To learn more, visit the WebFocus Knowledge Base, where you can search all technical topics and videos.